What's with the rose, man? It's date night, boy. Oh shit, it's on. Date night. What's up, you culinary derelicts? It's your boy, the maladjusted cook, coming at you today with date night. All y'all out there with no creativity, trying to look like you want to cook something good for your uh, 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 significant other, we got this. We got this. We're going steaks. Steak night, iron skillet style. Sing and learn the letters of the alphabet. B is for b, b. Bacon blue cheese. B. Brussels sprouts. B. Butter. How many bees is that? That's a lot of bees. It's like it's like five. Five, five bees. bees. Five, four or five. Five bees. B. Bees. We got bees all over the board. That's another bee. We got potatoes. We got uh, some stuff we're gonna throw in while we're like basting. That's another bee. B. To add to the bees, we're gonna baste the steak in the iron skillet. Butter, bacon, blue cheese, potatoes, Brussels, basting. PBR. Base letter B. Let's get this fucking shit started. So if you tuned into our last video, which was skirt steak fajitas, I talked a lot about the science of letting your beef come up to temperature before you drop it in the skillet. Same thing applies here, only how I cheated last time when uh, I told you I let it sit out for an hour, half hour to an hour, and I didn't. I've actually been letting this steak sit out for a good, at this point, probably about 45 minutes, which is fine, because we gotta take care of some potatoes, we gotta fry off bacon, so it's okay to let this thing sit. Another little secret that I did for this steak right here. As soon as I bought it, I brought it home, I salted it rather heavily. You can see how big the steak is. We got a nice thick cut. So, liberal salting is good. I put it right back into the fridge, open, just on a cooling rack, so the air could circulate around it and it could lose some of that moisture that I talked about in the last video. Uh, very important, you guys can do this with a thick cut of steak like this anywhere from probably like four hours to overnight. I've left these steaks, um, I mean this is a ribeye from the chuck in. I've left that in the fridge for probably a good 48 to 72 hours, no issues. Especially if you're doing a large like three bone rib rack, uh, you can leave it in there for a good week and a half, heavily salted, you'll be totally fine. It's just gonna pull a lot of moisture add depth to the flavor. So I've already salted this, you're not gonna see me salted on camera, so we've already taken care of that, which is key to a large cut of meat like this. So in addition to that, we're gonna fry off some bacon. Okay? We're gonna fry off some bacon. Uh, we're gonna add blue cheese to this. You can go all kinds of different ways on a steak. Uh, you can do what the French call au poivre, which is a lot of pepper, uh, usually in a cream sauce. Too fancy for me. We're gonna kick it old school. We're gonna kick it simple with just bacon and blue cheese. Sounds American to me, uh, we'll, we'll call it American. And then we're gonna baste in a little bit of butter. It's actually a lot of butter, but we're gonna put this all in the iron skillet. When we do the flip, you'll see what that looks like. And we're gonna put some aromatics into that butter to fry off when we flip, just adding more flavor to this already beautifully marbled piece of meat. Now, how much do you spend on a piece of meat like this? So think about it y'all, it's date night. Okay, I got this here out of the prime counter, and uh, this is the one time we're going anti-broke boy. I probably spent $22 on this steak, which between you and whatever significant other bum that you got sitting across from you, what is that, $11 per person? No tips? You kidding me? This shit is cheap to do. You guys can do it, you should do it. When you wanna bust out something nice, you know, break out the rose, the candles, a nice PBR, now you got a steak to go with it. Let's get cooking on this motherfucker and uh, see what we come up with. Follow me. First things first, let's get these potatoes on because this is what's gonna take the longest. We're doing potatoes, we're doing Brussels, and we're doing a steak. So you gotta time all this so everything comes out nice and hot, you can plate it up, it's gonna look good when you put it all together. Now one thing on potatoes I wanna call your attention to, I have put just enough water in the pan to cover the potatoes, okay? I'm not soaking them in like a giant vat. The key to this is I want the water cold and I want the potatoes to cook up as the water warms, kind of like dropping a frog in cold water. You heard about that story? Mm -hmm. you drop a frog in cold water, you slowly heat it up, the motherfucker will just boil. He doesn't know. He doesn't even know. He doesn't know. The temperature will just come up slowly, he doesn't even know. That's horrible. Sounds terrible. We're gonna do that with potatoes. So with potatoes though, potatoes can absorb a lot of salt. Everybody loves salty potatoes. You know you love salty french fries. Same idea here. So check the amount of salt we're gonna put in. Don't trip. If you're salt conscious, get a, get a shot of the salt. 
Nice big handful for the amount of potatoes I've got. You know what? I'm going another big handful. Looks like a lot of salt, but y'all, what I'm doing here is I am salting or seasoning the water. The water is going to boil the potatoes, right? We already know that. That water has got to be salty like the sea in order for it to permeate that potato and have flavor in it. You ever eaten a bland potato? You eat a bland potato before? No, man. I know, because I was cooking right, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly, right. So this is what we're doing. We're cooking the potatoes right. We gotta come up. What I'm gonna do is bring this up to a slight boil. I'm gonna drop it back down and let it simmer until the potatoes are kind of fork tender, right? I just wanna be able to poke into them with a fork or a toothpick or whatever you've got handy. And that, you'll know your, your potatoes are done. We'll drain them off after that. And then there's a second cooking method to get them extra crispy because everybody loves crispy potatoes. And that's where we're going. All right. While the potatoes are coming to a boil, I'm gonna start working on the bacon. Okay, we're gonna fry off the bacon in our iron skillet. Now, proper frying technique for bacon means low and slow. This is a cut of fatty pork. If I throw it in a hot iron skillet right off the bat, it's gonna burn, it's gonna stay fatty. If I cook it low and slow, a lot of that fat's gonna melt out, and I'm gonna end up with really, really crispy bacon. Now, you guys can do this one of two ways. Basically, what we're going to do is top the steak when we're done at the end of the night with the bacon and the blue cheese. So you can strip the bacon or fry the strips whole, or you can cut them into, we call lardons, or the French call lardons, which is just basically big chunks of bacon, okay? Fancy fucking way of saying big chunks of bacon, which is what I like to do because I can move it around in the pan easier. We talk about hot, cold spots. Little chunks like that help mitigate one side being burnt, one side being fatty. Let's look at this as we cut it up. So I've got a stack of really nice bacon here. It's thick cut, it's from my local grocer. I mean, my local grocer does things right. Sometimes you can go to a butcher shop, get some nice thick double cut bacon, whatever you wanna call it, whatever they call it. Just don't get the trashy stuff uh, that's real thin, right? We want something with substance because we're working uh, towards something with substance tonight, which is this really nice steak on my right. So let's look at how we cut this up. Keep in mind, just as we did the beef, right? When we did smash burgers. I told you to do these really smash burgers really big because they shrink down. Same thing applies to bacon. You guys know that if you drop bacon in a pan, nice big long strip turns into a small strip. So instead of cutting tiny little slices like this, I want thicker lardons because that is going to translate into a nice little chunk of bacon when it's done frying up. So just slice it up however thick you want it. There's no real, no real rules to this. And I'm gonna take all this right here and drop it in essentially a cold iron skillet. And then we're gonna low heat that, probably about medium low, not low low, but medium low, and let that fry. As we're letting it fry, the rules apply, man. Always be flipping. Because these aren't strips, we're just gonna always kind of be stirring every 10 to 20 seconds to make sure that we're moving around in the hot spots and we're not getting burnt, crispy little turds on the top of our steak at the end of the night. Let's go. So I've got a cold iron skillet. I've got the bacon that we just cut up together and I'm gonna drop it in here. You're not gonna hear any sizzle because it says the cold pan. Follow me. Now, don't trip. You don't hear any sizzle. Don't trip if the bacon sticks together, okay? As it starts to fry and loosen up, all this stuff will kind of separate and it'll start cooking and at that point you can move it around. No fancy tools, just a plain old dinner fork to get us started cooking the bacon up. We're also gonna reserve that bacon fat because we're gonna fry off the Brussels sprouts in it. So follow me back to the table. We're gonna start prepping Brussels sprouts while this is frying up. A bunch of different ways you can do Brussels sprouts, right? Brussels sprouts. Apparently they come from Brussels, I'm guessing. Do you know if they come from Brussels? Is, is, Brussels that, a, in Germany? is that a state? Is, is that a city? city? Is it a village? Is it some small country? It's a Brussels. Brussels. Belgium, I feel like. Bel ah, the Belgians. Ah, Belgians. Belgians would come up with some funny shit like this, like little cabbages. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, we're gonna make these little cabbages. Here we go. This is how you slice them up. Now, some people like to peel back like the first leaves. Eh, let's get rid of the first leaves and all that shit. Listen, just take them. If you got any dead leaves, sure, get rid of them. But a nice cut in half, totally fine. Chuck them to the side. Next, Brussels. Slice in half. Chuck them to the side. If I see any dirty rotten leaves, yes, I'll get those leaves off. Also what you want in Brussels too, because these are gonna cook up a certain way, you want the Brussels to be relatively the same size. So when I buy them, 
if I see like, like here's kind of three different sizes of Brussels, though they're relatively close. Like this is me being nitpicky, right? This is me being nitpicky. This guy might not make the cut because he's too small. He's gonna fry up before the other guys. Now there's nothing wrong with a crispy Brussels, but you don't want an overcooked mushy Brussels either. By the way, we got bacon. Buh. That's another B cooking in the background. Don't neglect your bacon. You can see it's just starting to steam up. Low, medium, low flame. Catch that flame, cameraman. You got it? Ooh, ooh, medium, low. Just move the bacon around a little bit. You'll notice it starts to sweat just slightly. That's good. That just means some of that fat is starting to melt away. And we're gonna end up with crispy Frenchy boy lardon. Mm. All right, let's let's go back to the Brussels. How are the potatoes good? Actually, the potatoes look good. Potatoes look good. And you guys, you can test your water. I said, you know, make it as salty as the sea. Literally, if you've ever had a mouthful of seawater, that's what you're looking for to salt these things. And you can get it. Oh, oh wow. Oh, like, oh wow. Yeah. Here we go. You just kind of dip your fork in there. Ooh, that's seawater, right? Mm. That's how I know my potatoes are going to be properly seasoned properly seasoned with the right salinity. That's right, you heard it here first, science, dude. Yeah. Salinity. All right, back to the Brussels. That's two more bees. We're gonna bee this motherfucker out, dude. All right, slicing Brussels. Nothing to see here. In fact, if we wanna speed this up, let's go ahead and do one of them fast forwards. This will be a fun one. Big boy Brussels. Biggin! Big boy Brussel. That's three more B's for this show. Big boy Brussel. That's, right. that's a good DJ name. Back, oh, that's pretty good. Big boy Brussel. Back to the fast forwards. We're done having the Brussels. Not having them, how, having them. How do you say, how, like, how do you distinct between having and having? As in, like having it as in, like the process of cutting something in half. Say half. Halfing. 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 Yeah. We just halved the fuck out of those Brussels. Halves. All right, we're done with the Brussels. The Brussels are gonna sit. I got bacon behind me. I've been neglecting the bacon while I was speed cutting them Brussels. Get back to starting the bacon. A little bit of steam, a little bit of water coming off. That's good. Water and fat. Mmm. Mmm. Noise to make. Mm -hmm. Bacon in Brussels. The potatoes are now at a boil. I'm going to turn them down to hey, that's a. Another bee. That's another bee. The potatoes are at a boil. But <laughs> we got too many bees in this episode. Yeah. So I'm going to turn the potatoes down to a gingerly boil. You get gingerly. that? Gingerly. That's a good vocabulary. It's word. pretty. Uh, it's pretty subjective. Right? Gingerly. Gingerly. Which, potato cooking doesn't have to be so strict, so subjectivity in potato cooking is A-OK. -okay. So check the gingerly boil. Get in there, cameraman. That might be too big of a word. I don't know, man. I think it's a good word. Nothing too hectic. Check the water, though. See that? That's a gingerly That's boil. That's a gingerly boil. Gingerly boil. So you're out here prepping before your uh, date shows up to the house and you're sipping some quality brew like a PBR. Don't get caught slipping. When they ring the doorbell, you want to look like you got some class, all right? Pour your shit in a glass. Look at that. Could be mistaken for champagne. Maybe a little bubbly white wine. Isn't that champagne? Bubbly white wine? Bubbly? I don't know. Bubble. Bubbly wine? Bubbly. Anyway, they catch you slipping, drinking PBR. I don't know, man. Date night might be off. Approach it with class, all right? Just with books, candles, roses, classy, all the way, all the way. I, yeah, dude, class. Check it out. Also, this is a lesson in drinking with class. Lift the motherfucker right here, eh? Okay? Pinky's up. Pinky's up. PBR never tasted better. Wow. Wow. That's a big belch. Mm. Two bees. <laughs> big. 
Baby belch. <laughs> so we've got the bacon. It's been in the pan for some time now. Mm -hmm. Some time. Some inordinate amount of time the bacon has been tossing around in this pan. I've been keeping it moving. So you see, we're getting like an even crisp on this. There's still some softies in there. It's good. We're taking it nice and slow. And right next to us is our potatoes. You see all this shit? All this, uh, this crusty white shit everywhere? That's salt blasting out of the water. It's been, as really? It's, as it's been gingerly boiling. Oh, wow. As it's been gingerly boiling. That also tells me that I've got good salt in the water. I'm good to go. I never knew that. So what I want to do, I'm going to take one of these potatoes out. Follow me around that way, Mr. Cameraman. Fucking Dunbar. I'm just going to check this potato. The fork slides in quite nicely comes out quite nicely. There's no resistance when I poke. Now, one thing you don't want to do with your potatoes, y'all don't be taking the potatoes out every two minutes and putting a bunch of fucking holes in them, all right? Just let them cook, let them cook. And you'll know, grab the biggest potato in the pot, put a little hole in it. These are just small yellow potatoes. That seems perfect to me. And if you want to taste test a soft potato, you can see the salinity level in the potato before we get to the next step. Now, hot potato, quite literally, that's a fucking thing, so don't burn your face off. That's a salty potato. We've fucking done good. I lost half the fucking, uh, what do you call those things? Taste buds. Taste buds! Taste buds. That's another B. Mmm. The potatoes are good. Let's get them off the stove. I'm gonna kill the heat. Potatoes are good. Our taste test was good. I'm gonna kill the heat. I'm gonna strain them out. Let's head to the sink. Good, okay. Guys, I'm using a few more specialty tools today. Just a few, because it is date night. I'm breaking my iron skillet rule because it's date night. So if you guys are gonna go all out for date night, you're gonna bring some, some partner of yours over, you're gonna try to impress them, you're gonna have to have a few more tools. I'm breaking my rule also of never doing sides, right? We're doing sides today. So I'm just gonna put the strainer up here, get that salty water off. I'm gonna drop that hot pot right into the sink. I'm just gonna let them sit, let them steam out. Forget about the potatoes for now, we'll come back to those later. Potatoes are done. Potato well, they're not done, they're done boiling. Is that good? It's hard. It, it hits nice. Yeah. Man, man sipping the, uh, the old fashioned that we just made, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> potatoes are done for now. We're gonna go to the next step in a little bit. By the way, by the way, I neglected to mention this. I am heating up the oven because the next step in this whole, did not dessert, what is this? Date, date night. Date it's night. not dessert night, it's date night. Date. And this date night, we're pulling out all the stops. I got the oven firing behind me. I want to get it hot, probably like 450. Bong, yeah, 450, maybe bong over here, 450. I want 450 degrees on the oven. So I've been heating that up while we've been messing around with all this shit. The bacon is still in the iron skillet. Oh my God, how many times are we gonna look at this bacon? Hopefully this will be the last time. We're pretty much there. Uh, I've been tossing this around in the skillet. I've been multitasking, working on this stuff. The good thing is, is that when you have your skillet this low, there's very low risk of actually burning the bacon. You just have to remember it's there and you gotta stir it up every once in a while. Dunbar. Um, mm. Look at that. We're getting beautiful golden color, no burn. Couple of fatty boys, that's all right. You know, when you're munching steak, a little bit of steak fat, a little bit of pork fat, and bacon's so salty in itself, it's just another seasoning uh, on top of that steak. Crazy that that was all those strips. I know, I know, it, it reduces to nothing. That's a good point. You wanna put enough bacon in the skillet to make sure you can top the amount of steak that you've got. I think for this, I probably used, I don't know, was it five or six strips of bacon? I probably yeah. could have done more. You know, it's gonna seem like the crowded, uh, the pan is crowded at first, but really it's not. It's all gonna melt down, a lot of that bacon fat's gonna come out. So we're pretty much done. Um, also a good point on bacon, knowing when it's done. If you see this little white fuzz, when your shit starts to get white, little fuzzies like that, that means you're very, very close to done, if not done, because as you pull this out of the skillet, the bacon will continue to crisp up. So you don't wanna let it get too far into the cooking process by visual. So this guy might look a little bit soft right here, but when I pull him out, he's gonna get nice and crispy on the paper tops. So anytime you see that white fuzz, 
coming up on top of your bacon as you're cooking it, whether it's strips or whether it's these lard on, you're probably just about ready. Bacon. Who doesn't like bacon? Bacon's still on low. Last check on the bacon. If you think this is overkill, it is not, okay? We got all those white fuzzies that we want. Take a dish towel, don't burn your goddamn hands off. Okay, I've done that. Yes. Always remember your iron skillet is hot through and through. Try to get the bacon out without dumping the fat. You wanna leave that fat behind. Using a fork is good for this because it's slotted. It should leave that fat behind. You see a little fat pool that I've got there? Mm, fat mm, pool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It makes some soap out of it. Mm-hmm. Bacon soap. So, oh. Shut's bite. All right. Got a lot of crust on there. No big deal. And what we're gonna do is fry off the Brussels sprouts, but I'm gonna kill this. I'm gonna kill that. I'm gonna leave the grease in there. Let that kind of settle back down again. I'm gonna check my oven, make sure that we're up to temp for the potatoes, which have been cooling over there in the sink for some time, so we're done boiling the potatoes gingerly, yeah? And uh, we're gonna put those potatoes on a sheet. We're gonna get them cooking. I can't fire the Brussels yet because the potatoes are gonna take some time. And we're gonna make sure all this comes out together. Oven, 450, potatoes going in. Follow me, let's work on the potatoes. Potatoes are cooled. Potatoes have cooled down, now it's time for the next step. So right now we've got mushy potatoes, but we're gonna make them crispy potatoes. AKA, crispy boys. Crispy boys. God damn it. Here we go. Dump the potatoes onto a sheet. Usually, whatever cheap ass oven you have has probably got like a fucking baking sheet in the bottom, a roasting pan, I think they call it, mm -hmm. in the bottom in that little like drawer that nobody opens. Yeah. There's usually a roasting pan down there. Mm -hmm. Use that roasting pan if you don't have a baking sheet, same, same. Here's what I wanna do. I can use a fork, I can use my fist, it really doesn't matter. Potatoes, these should be pretty cool, but potatoes also retain a lot of heat. I'm just gonna take my hand and literally smash them down. Look at that. Smash yeah. them. Smash the potatoes down, they are hot. That does not feel good. I might want to use a fork. Smashy boys. Smash boys. Smash. I'm more smash than that guy. Yes. Let's put some oil on these things, man, because they're going to need some oil, okay? They can't just go into the oven like this, all dry and weird and shit. So, uh, I'm going to put some oil on them. Basic, uh, what, well, basic, that's another B. I need a B count on this video. Basic. Here we go, uh, basic canola oil. Drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. Oh, that's a lot of oil, Mr. Maladjusted Man. Yeah, that's all right. A lot of this is gonna cook up. You're basically gonna fry these potatoes, basically gonna fry these potatoes in the oven. Now, before I put them in the oven, I wanna add a little bit of spice to them. Get back in here, Dunbar. Pepper. This time, I made sure my pepper mill had fucking pepper in it before I started the show. What kind of oil is that? Canola. Man. Man, you hippies want grapeseed oil, use grapeseed oil, okay? You don't like all the, you don't like all the easily accessible shit, you can go to Whole Foods, get you some fucking fucked up oil. Peppered. And what I'm gonna do when these come out, I'm gonna taste test them one more time for salt. Little known fact. What's that? I forgot. Fuck it, put the potatoes in the oven. Oil, pepper, put them in the oven. Drink PBR and relax for a little bit. Like I said, I'm going probably 450. I'm gonna check these things in maybe like 20, 25 minutes just to see the level of doneness. You can get these as crispy as you want at 450. Hopefully they don't burn, they might if you neglect them, but we're just gonna leave them in there for about 20, 25 minutes. We're gonna check on them then. If they need more crisp, we'll leave them in a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. If they're too crispy, I led you wrong, and I'm sorry. Let's blow them in the oven.